Hello everyone, I am Rajesh Sangupta and we are continuing our discussion on daily practice and nationalism. So in the last lecture we have discussed about Nandalal Bose's contribution and this um, you know, alternative mode of art education which was promoted by Rabindranath Tagore in his um, uh, school in, in Shantiniketan. So what we see that Nandalal Bose as the first principal of, of Shantiniketan had done that there were few things that he was he was uh, known as uh, the master uh, or, or, or like I mean this this beloved guru by his disciples and students. So what he did was that he uh, did not make a distinction between various different practices. So this is one example that we have this is an untitled drawing on paper and in this pa uh, drawing what we find that there is this ink drawing and in which there are those trees which are made and each of these trees they have human faces. So there are those flowers which have the human faces and this might actually come from one of the Bengali stories that where there were those seven brothers and sisters and uh, uh, who, who were born as those uh, uh, you know this, this plants. So this, this is something that we find that in, in Nandalal Bose's drawings in one hand he was uh, made drawings or paintings which had um, you know which, which had uh, uh, themes from the uh, uh, Hindu mythology from historical events and everything and then on the other hand we also see that I mean he made drawings and paintings which uh, were closely connected to book illustrations and then we also see that I mean how his drawings had also contributed to making float designs among many other different practices. So float design or alpona is another practice which is prevalent in, in various part of Bengal and uh, it is also something that is um, you know it, it is done with rice paste and then it is uh, rice paste which is diluted in water and then the rice paste is used with a very simple tool like a stick or sometimes it's just with a blob of cotton and then that is used for drawing onto the floor on the earthen floor. So when the rice paste dries then like it becomes white and the earthen floor is, is already uh, um, you know with the earthy tone so there is a contrast between the float design and, and its background. So that is how these alponas are created. So some of the counterparts of alpona can be found in different other parts of India, uh, in, in Orissa, in Tamil Nadu, in Andhra Pradesh and so on. So in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh we have kolam where uh, the instead of like rice paste it is the rice powder that is used for drawing onto the surface. So what happens that Nandalal Bose when he studies or when he appreciates some of these local practices like alpona he does not discourage them but he also sees that how he, the alpona can feed into his work at the same time he can contribute to making some of those uh, you know this float decorations. So we see that how his intervention also uh, um, allowed more and more students to take up alpona uh, for, for uh, doing decorations during the festivals also during theatrical performances. So this image that we see in a, here uh, even though this is a drawing and uh, it is not an alpona but some of the ideas for example the kind of symmetry that we find in this float designs for example in this image we see this clear division of, of the entire picture plane at the center like this vertical division and then here how in the apex there is this um, you know there is a bunch of flower so that that also marks it differently from the others uh, I mean you know from this um, hemispherical um, you know shape. So that is that is something we find that I mean this this kind of design principles are are uh, perhaps been um, you know imbibed from Alpona and different other craft practices from of Bengal 
and and this is it is not necessarily from learning about the um, uh, the pre colonial art practices or other art practices but this is this has something to do with the craft practices and even here the way like i mean the 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 symmetry is maintained by showing this uh, projection here and here so this these are also some of the signs in which we find that how uh, the symmetry uh, that is learned from the artisanal works is successfully imbibed into his drawings and uh, at the same time when we see that i mean the character of the lines if we see in the artisanal works that the the uniformity of the lines are maintained and then uh, um, the symmetry precision all those things are given priority so those things are challenged here for sure then we see that i mean there are those swift lines which are used for making the forms in some places the darkness is created by uh, adding uh, you know like i mean extra ink and in but this is not really uh, done in all the different uh, all parts of the image so this the the characters of the line this swiftness of the brush strokes these are something that we find that i mean that is perhaps different from the artisanal sectors that is something we can closely associate with the uh, you know the the freehand drawing which were which were taught in the art institutions so this is i mean of course like i mean not in the colonial art institution but i mean in in shantiniketan so these are these are some of the things we find that his his drawing uh, or like i mean his overall uh, approach towards uh, making images was something that was in between uh, understanding art understanding craft understanding the institutional mode of art making at the same time understanding the daily practices of of um, you know making different kind of artisanal works so with that we also see that he had written several books or like um, uh, the booklets one can, one can say and some of the booklets are meant for students to know more about art uh in india and then like i mean there are some of the booklets which are there for uh, people to copy and learn about different kind of um, historical indian images and uh, one would be perhaps uh, the example is rupavali and so in rupavali there are like i mean those those several booklets are there which are there for students to copy them to learn about different kind of gestures postures and balance in the figure what all bends can happen in the body how to find a uh, rhythm in the movement all those things so those those attempts we find that i mean um, nandalal bose's practice uh, had had contributed to now the other thing that that was also very significant was this one project that is called shahoj part and in which which was rabindranath tagore's project and rabindranath tagore wanted that i mean the um, uh, this this particular book project for for primary education where like the bengali alphabets were taught to the young learners so what we see there that i mean each of those alphabets and um, or like i mean um, you know this alphabets were made part of a, a poetry here in the in the um, you know in the lower part of these pages and then those were associated with image on top this images were developed by nandalal bose so nandalal bose was involved in uh, making not only the um, you know not not only the drawings but also he made them into lino cut so lino cut is a relief print making process in which we find those lino sheets which were produced industrially they were utilized for um making this um you know this this relief blocks and then they were inked and printed now what we see here for a relief print making also for the purpose of of people to learn from these images there there was a need for bold imagery so something that would not have too many details and that can be understood by all people it's not just uh, we are talking about people who are trained in the art education institutions but it is a book which is meant for all households that's the reason the images 
had to be simple but at the same time they need to convey the idea that is already there in the poetry and then it should also be um, you know it is something that, that that can be understood by all people so those things we find that in nandalal bose's practice that he on the one hand he was a highly skilled uh, painter and drawer and then uh, on the other hand he was also very much invested in teaching art to 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 the students in um, you know in in uh, kalabhavana in shantiniketan but at the same time he was also extending his practice to to think that i mean how these images can be part of the daily lives of the young learners so extending the reach of art that is that is something we find and it is definitely it's a collaborative project between uh, Tagore and, and Nandalal Bose in which we find that how this simple form of poetry and uh, this, this, this images they can go side by side and they, they contribute to this overall learning atmosphere. What we also see in these images is the superb distribution of positive and negative space. So, uh, how there is, uh, I mean, of course, when we talk about relief print making, linocut, then we only have provision for, um, I mean, for, for the simple prints, we only have provision for uh, this one color and everything needs to be uh, conveyed with, with that. And in this one, we see that how the same, uh, you know, color is used for uh, making the shape of this hut here and then also like I mean making this earthen woven and this this small um, you know like I mean um, this stool for sitting and then of course this uh, pot for, for cooking and the um, you know the smoke that comes out of it and of course we definitely see that I mean the same black color is used for uh, you know the curving the, the, the silhouette of this of this woman who, who cooks. So, all that I am trying to say is that within this limitation that I mean even though all these uh, different uh, objects and the figure needed to be carved on the same lino sheet on the, on, on the same surface, but the character of this different different kind of um, objects for example, like the pot, how the pot is different from the oven, how the uh, oven is different from this, this airy smoke that, that comes out of the pot. And then of course, how that smoke is different from the solid figure of the woman. So all these different kind of objects and figures are understood by Nandalal Bose and they are superbly uh, depicted in these images. Now another example of Nandalal Bose's linocut would be the superb image of uh, Mahatma Gandhi and, and uh, this one that came from 1930. So 1930 as we have already discussed that I mean 1930 was the year when Mahatma Gandhi um, um, you know uh, he, he announced the salt march and uh, by that time that uh, Nandalal Bose had uh, made this image by that time we find that I mean perhaps that Gandhi was already involved in the salt march or perhaps he was in the jail and what we see in this image is that uh, uh, unlike the image that, that, that we have seen earlier that I mean how uh, you know the background was cooped out for, for um, you know having, having this negative space around the main figure, here the background is kept dark and only the strokes of the uh, you know the linocut tool was used for carving out the image onto the uh, this, this lino plate on the surface. And by that what we find here is this, this image of Mahatma Gandhi and Gandhi who we see that I mean he is recognizable from his physical features and then he also wears this humble um, this dhoti which is, which is above his knees something that was also a very conscious choice of Gandhi that he wanted to wear something that is, that is more um, um, you know recognizable as a cloth of the workers, the agricultural laborers, the artisans and commoners. And then he, his upper body is covered with uh, another piece of fabric but just a simple fabric, it is not tailored or anything else. 
and then we see that I mean he holds a stick which is also um, uh, a characteristic of, of Gandhi and then the stick is not something that is um, you know that it, it is also not part of any kind of violent movement but it is for him to support his walking because as we know that I mean he had taken up this, uh, this various marches and in which he had walked extensively for which he this the stick was his constant companion for for all these different activities so we see that i mean he is shown here in the gesture of walking so he is not shown here as an icon who stands and faces the audience but he is shown here involved in his own uh, work and that is this tireless walking and tireless struggle of uh, overthrowing the British government. So, this is the reason what we see that I mean he is almost like engrossed in his own thoughts and, and he is in the process of walking, he is moving, he is not stable, he is not somewhere who is stagnant. So, this are some of the characteristic features that we find. Also see that I mean the kind of lines those are used. So, these lines are something that we can think that how some of the characteristics of his drawings for example, if we consider this particular drawing in the left side where uh, you know this, this calligraphic quality of the lines are emphasized, here that lines come back. So, for example, if we think about like I mean the line which sort of marks his shoulder, so the depth here is, is, is much more than like I mean uh, when, when the line sort of like I mean falls into to suggest his arm. So, this is also something this, this uh, you know this very strategic at the same time this playful uh, gesture to play with the depth in the line this bringing the calligraphic quality in the line is something that attributes to the dynamism of the image. So, if the entire image was uh, executed with only uniform lines then the, the dynamism in this image the, the sense of movement that, that, is, that is there in the image might not have been there. So, the character of the line is very important and these bold lines are achieved by using the lino cut tools which, which scoops out the uh, lino matrix from, from, the, from the plate and then that is how like these negative areas, these white areas are, are, are produced. And then of course, as we know that I mean in, the, in a block then it is rolled with ink and then a paper is placed onto that to take a print out of it. So, that is how the print is taken. So, these are some of the things we need to consider that how each and every detail of um, you know sometimes these are just like I mean uh, very economical, but at the other times we also see that how this very careful at the same time playful uh, approaches towards uh, understanding a person, understanding um, you know humans, but, but then also like I mean their, their internal strength their internal uh, characters is, is, is expressed. So, I would say that I mean in Nandalal Bose's practice all these things came together because of uh, his, his uh, you know his, his dedication towards uh, um, understanding art as part of life. It is not something that is just restricted to the institution and then like I mean a life being different from that. And that is that is how we also see that I mean his these various activities that he had uh, taken up over the years had reflected the diversity, the various reaches of of his practice. Now this is another uh, set of images that Nandalal Bose had produced, and these are called the Haripura posters. And Haripura posters were the ones which were uh, made in the 1930s. So, there was this Haripura Congress in, uh, in, in this, this small village called Haripura in, in Gujarat in 1938 and for that reason Mahatma Gandhi was of course, I mean he was the one who had called for this Congress. So, he, um, uh, he also asked Nandalal Bose to make posters for this uh, Haripura conference. 
So after Mahatma Gandhi's request, Nandalal Bose agreed to make 84 posters. So in his supervision, like uh, he, he made initial drawings. In some cases, we find that, I mean, he also made the entire paintings. Uh, but in other cases, we also find that he had collaborated with his students to, to finish the paintings. And that is how 84 paintings were made which were used as posters for um, this Haripura Congress. Now, what happened, what is, what is uh, so special about the Haripura posters? Now, if we see that, that I mean there was also uh, a drive towards understanding what is India or like I mean uh, how we understand the land. Now, this, this idea is something that was also uh, nurtured by Gandhi in his, in his lifelong commitment. And if we see some of the early um, attempts that he had made, for example, when he uh, you know, promoted the use of khadi in the early 1920s and then like in 1930, the salt march. So these this all different things are something that is not situated in, uh, in, the, in the urban spaces but in the rural India. And he was deliberately in favor of that because he understood that the urban centers in India are only handful. But the majority of the land, the entire Indian subcontinent are full of the villages and then all various occupational groups, different people who contribute to the society are mostly situated in the villages. That is the reason he had his, uh, um, you know, he, he, he put much stress in understanding the life of the rural areas in India and by that he also meant that I mean how different kind of occupational groups are there and how those occupations are also part of the daily life of different uh, communities. So for that reason we see this uh, philosophy is also reflected in the Haripura posters. So, in one hand we find that this uh, Gandhian philosophy of, of the, the, the rural sites as the, um, you know, as, as the sites of importance in the Indian subcontinent is, is playing out in these images, but at the same time Nandalal Bose's uh, commitment towards the local community in and around Shantiniketan had also contributed to uh, bringing life to this, to these images. Now, what do we see in this? In these images which are done uh, swiftly in, and in some cases one can also sort of, one can also compare them to the, the swiftness of the Kaligat images, but there are always similarities and differences between them. Now, what we find here, these this images are swiftly done and with like minimal details and in all these images we find that there are um, either, either there, there is only one figure or there are group of people and all of them are uh, involved in various different kind of occupation. So in the left side of the image we find that there is a woman who is involved in spinning the yarn and she is using a charka or a spinning wheel for this work and she is shown here in a gesture that I mean she, she, she is um, you know in, shown here in profile and almost in a gesture that, that reminds us of the, of the Jaina manuscripts that, that perhaps we have studied in the, in the earlier part of this course. And, but without any uh, you know extravagant detail. Now the entire image is also uh, framed within this architectural frame that we find and this, this, this frame is something that was um, uh, you know like I mean in, introduced in all images in the Haripura posters. Now um, I mean most of the images in the Haripura posters even in this one we find that there is this architectural frame that is involved and uh, that, that is 
that is not to suggest that I mean there is an architectural space as such, but that is to frame all those uh, figures those are there in these images. So, here we see there is perhaps there is perhaps a pahalwan um, or a security person who's who's situ I mean who's depicted um, you know in the image in the right side and and he is um, identified with with dark skin and well built body and he only um, you know like I mean wears a, a, a lower garment and he holds this this bamboo stick and perhaps a shield in his hand. So, this is this is something that, that we find that as, as I have already mentioned that there are those different occupational groups that they then that those are depicted in this image. So, uh, the valor of, of this person and how this valor is contrasted by uh, you know the, the graceful uh, image of this the of, of the woman in, in, in the left side. So, this 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 are also something we find that this all these different kind of characteristics are, are emphasized only by the use of color or minimal details. Sometimes the posture of the body, the, the, the expression in that their faces, they also contribute to um, you know emphasizing this, this all these uh, factors. Now, what we also see are different this, this character of the lines that that particular kind of those calligraphic line that I have already mentioned. I mean we can see them here as well that how the line varies in depth and something that adds to um, um, you know the dynamism of, of the uh, bodies. Now, another important aspect one can also imagine that how uh, these this images are framed, what, what does the frame come to uh, signify. Sometimes the frame can also be uh, part of like I mean emphasizing this, this, uh, this, this ground which is uh, reserved for each of these figures to operate within, but also this is a way to give them prominence because when we see that uh, where frame is used in the architectural setup or in the, or, or in the uh, paintings which are framed. So, that is that is a gesture for us to give importance to this uh, you know whatever is there within the frames. So, here this visual frame like I mean the frame is not really done with an elaborate frame that is added uh, uh, you know around the images, but this is within the images themselves uh, more like the miniature paintings. So, it is a way to give respect, it is a way to suggest their importance in, 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 the, uh, in building the, um, the rural sectors in India. So, in that sense we can still see that I mean how the this very strategic, but minimal use of framing is, is important and it is a way to emphasize that why these communities are important for nation building. It is not something that we can deny. We will continue more on this issue and then uh, look into few other aspects of this kind of practices in the next lecture. Thank you.